a brand new brand, and this is a first for YouTube, I believe, maybe even Instagram, with a new face. Let's drink some whiskey. And what a face it is. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> How are you keeping it? How does it feel to be in the home of Herlin? Uh, I have to I, get I, that in there because the last time I met you, you were making fun of Kilkenny lads. I wouldn't know, we're not in Temporary. Uh, <laughs> oh, so. uh, how are you keeping? Good, and yourself? Yeah, I'm alright, I'm alright. Good well, to see you. Thank you for taking the time to come up to uh, Kilkenny today, Christie's, and uh, bring with you a new release for uh, what is a relatively new brand I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm yeah, seeing yeah. On the, uh, in the Irish market. On it the is. Off trade, in off trade. It is, yeah. O'Driscoll's Irish Whiskey. So uh, this, the brand itself, probably around eight, nine months kind of thing. Um, but the overall company, it's owned by Stafford Bonded, which is a company just, which has been around since 1892. Wow. So you can kind of have the, the reassurance that it's going to be around for a while, I guess. Yeah. Well, Stafford Bonded, anybody who kind of is into the whiskey scene will say in Ireland, and not so much kind of, it's a little bit behind the curtain, would know it very well yeah. anyway. Yeah. So they're based out of Waterford, is the Bonded Warehouse, yeah. sorry, uh, pardon me, and the company itself is based in Wexford. Yeah, so it started in Wexford, 1892, and then they, we have a 55-acre site down in Waterford as well, down by yeah. the airport, so that's all the warehouse. And so we do the warehousing for a lot of like lar the large companies in Ireland and stuff as well. But I remember when I went down and saw the warehousing the first time, I went, "Oh well, okay, you know, serious. it is, yeah, it's yeah. serious." <laughs> okay, yeah. And this is this is coming from someone who's worked for you know the likes of a Pernod Ricard and stuff like that. You're still going in, and going, "Oh well, yeah." Okay, you so know. you know what you, you know what yeah. the, what you're talking about. Yeah. You've seen it before. Now it's on a big scale. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about um, O'Driscoll's whiskey because it is relatively new. Yeah. Re um, I haven't had this yet, yeah. so I'm going to give you my honest opinion when I have it, good or bad, but take us a little bit, walk us through what you're trying to achieve here. What the, it's a blended whiskey, correct? Yeah, blended whiskey, yeah. Give us the details. Blended whiskey, very much at that, uh, you know, you're pouring blended whiskey. We want this going, you know, you're going in asking for a whiskey, you're going in asking for a whiskey and Coke, whiskey and soda, whiskey and ginger, a cocktail, whatever it is. We want this to be the product that's used. So that's the market we're pitching it at. Michael Stafford, who's our uh, CEO, uh, he's fourth generation Stafford bonded. Uh, and so his, family name on his mother's side was O'Driscoll, hence the name O'Driscoll. So okay. West Cork family, that, that's where that, the name comes from. Um, very Irish, very, you know, uh, ing I think O'Driscoll was one of the first registered surnames in Ireland, something like that. Okay. But the idea behind it was that he uh, wanted to bring out uh, his own whiskey because of the growth and success of Irish whiskey, obviously. But there's no fully Irish owned uh, you know that kind of in in that kind of category you know right uh, you, you look at a lot of the bigger brands they are owned by large multinationals which is absolutely fine like that's where the growth of irish whiskey has come from correct but it, again it's just to give people an option that fully irish owned uh irish brand uh, at that pouring level because as you and i know there's a huge amount as we go up yes scale but not as much down at the the kind of pouring level and because it's a difficult market to break into, you okay. know, you, you look at the success of the uh, the ubiquitous green bottle. Yeah, uh, it, it's by far and away the most dominant in the the blended Irish whiskey category. So it's look, we're not saying it's going to be that overnight or anything like okay, that. Okay, yeah, but, just, but you have to start somewhere. Yeah, start and somewhere. and, and yeah. this is kind of that introduction into that, giving people a different option in or around that area yeah. because they. they they are few and far between, and the ones that we have seen are there an awful long time. Yes. And, yeah. But then, you know, it's not an easy thing for you to break into because whiskey drinkers, by their very nature, are very hard to break habits, are very habit and creatures. I mean, Irish people so, in general are very, were very brand conscious as well. Yeah. So building a brand, you kind of have to go in on the ground, you know, like in the bar here, talking to the lads, explaining what the, the yeah. brand is and give it a little push. Um, but, you know, people have been really receptive and to be honest, from a taste profile and taste perspective, the feedback's been excellent. Okay, good. Um, and that's very much what we're pitching at. We want to be the best taste in blended whiskey below 30 euro. Grand. That, that's okay. where we're at with this. So that, that that will retail in on tra uh, off trade, we'll say 30, less than sub 30-ish? Uh, yeah, so off trade, you're gonna be kind of, yeah, somewhere between 25 and 30 quid, okay. Gen roughly. generally. Yeah, yeah roughly, so you know. Definitely a good value product. Um, and break down, I'm gonna pour it, so while I'm pouring yeah. it, break down a little bit about the spirit first. Yes. Yeah, so Whatever the, you can tell us. Because yeah, yeah, the spirit, 80% 80 uh, 80 grain, 20% malt. So very much pitched at a little bit of a sweeter profile um, because in general in Ireland and North America, which is you know the largest whiskey, uh, whiskey market 
for Irish whiskey. Um, so very much pitched at that market. All bourbon cask, again, okay. to give that nice kind of sweetness. But works very well, whether you're having it neat, whether you're, you're drinking it over ice, whatever, you wanna mix it, don't be, we're not precious about it. Like it, okay. it is a whiskey made for drinking. Yes. Um, and that, that's what it's all about, like, you know. So is there any particular age statements on any of the grain or the malt used in this, or is it kind of non-age? Non, non, non-age yeah. statement, but again, you're talking that kind of four or five kind yeah, of okay. year, years old that you're, this is standard across the category. I guess where we're, we're coming from it we've slightly we will be a slightly higher malt proportion than a lot of blends okay um but yeah we think the the balance is quite nice in terms of sourcing of bourbon cask because again you look at what stafford bonded do you know it's cask management is cask uh yes. storage so we have access to really good casks so again you'll see that kind of coming through in this as well and why not yeah so 40 percent abv sub 30 euro everyday kind of drinker bar yeah. pour using cocktails, gingers. Uh, Irish coffees, hot whiskeys, whatever yeah. whatever you're having, this is your kind of go-to, versatile, have it in the press. You know, yeah. we all have a, a couple of bottles of whiskey in the press that we've seen our entire lives. Here's a new one. Yeah. Um, and this is a fully Irish owned brand from, based out of the Southeast, uh, Waterford, Wexford heritage, kind of linked in with, with Cork as well, I suppose a bit. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully gonna, gonna grow that out. We're in a, a good few markets globally as well. So on the nose. Homegrown, yeah. On the nose. On the nose, very, very, what you'd expect. Very exactly. simple. Yeah, very yeah. simple, kind of toasted oak, a bit of vanilla, all those kind of classic notes that people want and are familiar with from Irish whiskey. We're not trying grainy. to, yeah, we're not trying to, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, but we're just trying to add to the to what's out there and kind of take a little bit of that share market and give people another option, I guess. Yeah, okay, it's all about options, I see that. A little bit of a kind of, I would say, a kind of a lemony citrus, yeah. citric note there. Again, you're getting that from that grain coming through, that little bit of sweetness coming through, I think, from the grain as well. Oh, oh. It's better in your mouth than it is on this. <laughs> it's larger. It's larger. And so, on the palate again, you see, it's a nice, easy drinker. Um, bit of that toasted oak, you can get that bourbon cask coming across. Yeah. So the, the use of just the bourbon cask, what you're gonna get, is you're gonna get a lot more of that toasted oak and vanilla and that kind of sweetness coming through. A lot more sweetness, yeah. vanilla side of things, definitely. A little bit, a little bit of honey, but. Yeah, and I mean, look, we, we think about what, what does the Irish taste profile want? Mm. We want sweetness. Uh, American taste profile tends to be uh, uh, not as sweet as ours actually, but still quite sweet. They like that sweetness. Yeah, that's so like, yeah. That's, that's what we wanted to carry through into the liquid. And again, kind of wanted to, that's very much, our mission statement is very much best taste and blend below 30 euro. And now for 40% ABV, there's a tremendous amount of spice in the yeah. palate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and that grain component really kind of shining through. As grain component, the malt, a great malt in it as well. But again, I think it's the bourbon casks as well that, you know, we're, we're kind of used to. You get that spice from, uh, you know, the fresh bourbon casks and stuff as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, it's a super product. Don't, you know, super tasting product, super easy very reasonably priced and that's what we're all about at the at the moment this is the the core skew you know? and what i'm surprised with is um it's not for that kind of non-age statement for where you're coming at it's it's not overly light on the paddock it's yeah. not overly thick either it's kind of a medium uh, well sub medium but like it's not light light no it's and there's a, still a bit of finish on it and again you're talking 80 80 percent grain uh, if, when you start going up to above that that's when that lightness starts to come into it i think with a, with a lot of blends you'll okay. tend to it, it'll tend to Tastes almost thin. Tint. Yeah. yeah. Whereas you want a bit of a viscosity. I mean, when you roll it around the glass, you can see it in the glass. Yeah. You're yeah. gonna get you're gonna get some some legs on it. You're gonna get some tears. You know, we're in Ireland. We're depressed. We call them tears. Yeah. Um, this is just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> but this is uh, yeah. It, it's an it's an everyday in moderation drinker. Yeah. For sub thirty, roughly. Yeah. So yeah, not and, not too bad. I, like that vanilla is definitely kind of coming in now. It's it's like there's there's a softness to it. Yeah. It's not aggressive from like what you would. Expect the kind of cheaper end. Uh, yeah, the, I don't want to say cheaper end. I want no, to say I know better, what you mean. Uh, better value end yeah, yeah. of the, the spectrum. Absolutely, and I think you know we, we probably you and I uh, kind of in around whiskey for a long time probably don't spend a lot of time focusing on whiskey at this price point. No, uh, uh, it's, it, we don't. Let's yeah. call a spade a spade. No, and and because it's it, but the thing is, it's a very hard market to break into. Uh, but because we have the kind of economy of scale in terms of warehousing, in terms of sourcing, in terms of casks, yeah. it makes it viable for Stafford Bonded and other skills to do it. But there's a reason there's not dozens of, of brands that you see kind of trying to muscle in into the Irish on-trade market and, and stuff. Yeah. Obviously, you do see brands, uh, blended, blended Irish whiskey brands out there, and there's loads of them. 
but there's very few of them try to gain a share of the on-trade market and really try to grow the brand, grow the brand. A- outside of just selling through the off-trade or whatever. Yeah. And that's our MO moving forward for yes. now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you said to me before we started rec- recording, just give us a rundown. You're in a couple of key markets. Yeah, so give we're, us the markets. I think we're in about uh, 12 states in the US now. Um, you know, we're in France, we're in Germany, uh, we're in a few a few others as well, you know. Uh, we're, we have a guy based in Africa, actually. Um, so he's he's based in South Africa, but Mozambique, Kenya, a few a few of those kind of uh, East Africa markets as well. So we are kind of growing the footprint of the brand quite quickly. When you think we've only been out there for about eight months, yeah. Um, but there is massive demand out there for Irish whiskey at this price point because that's this is the this is an introduction point. Like you know, what I mean, yeah. this is this is how we get people into to drinking whiskey. This is what. You know, nobody, the, the market for whiskey will always be probably 90% blend, 10% single malt, single grain, whatever. Yeah. So this is what people drink when they're drinking Irish whiskey. And you yeah. know, that's that's the market we're going after. And we've seen that through time and time again of different people talking about whiskeys and you know, being in the, the industry, you, you know can, yourself, like very rare that people would go and expensive they, and single malt, single butt pot still, and unless it's good value, yeah. you know, you have to take a number of boxes, but yeah. people want an easy drinker. Well, this is know? it. I remember I, I always go back to, uh, I, got a, I got a book, um, I was given a book for, as a gift, uh, it was a bit of history of Johnny Walker. Okay. And so this is back in the 1890s. So again, 1890s when Stafford Bonded was starting up, uh, but they were, Johnny Walker's internal comments was like, we're gonna get people drinking single malt, you know, we're gonna move them away from blends. You won't, you never will. It's always gonna be, you know, if the single malt market got to 15% of the total market, that'd be huge. But you look at what Johnny Walker sells in terms of like 28 million cases globally versus the biggest single malts, about a million cases. Yeah. So people want something that's uh, easily drinkable, easily mixable, um, and that's where we're coming out with this because that's what the majority of the market really is. You know? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I think you, you know, you've hit the nail on the head. Um, I think, you know, that at that price point, you're not getting an overly complicated or an underly complicated. It is what it is. It does what it says on yeah. the tin. Um, again, I could see that being used. Um, I'd actually love to try it in a ginger as well. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, we, we're, we're, we're going to do a ginger beer, um, kind of an O'Driscoll's Mule okay. is, is our serve. But listen, it works really well. It, it, it is a whiskey that does exactly what it says on the tin, but perfectly perfectly priced, we like to think as well. Look, if you're watching from the States, keep an eye out. Like uh, Mick said here, 13 different, 12 or 13 different 12 states. 13 yeah, different states, different yeah. states come to a place near you. Uh, definitely becoming more available on the Irish, on trade and off trade as the year grows. And of course, through Europe and Africa, as we see. Yeah. Cool. So there it is, O'Driscoll's Irish Whiskey, blend of 80-20, uh, single grain to single malt, and uh, coming soon to you, sub 30 euros. Slauncha. Slauncha. Thanks, Mick. Cheers. Thanks, boy. Cheers, bud.